Hello, and uh, welcome to the session on growing your business while supporting your local schools. Uh, my name is Mike Doe. It's a picture of me here. A um, little bit about me. Uh, got into the industry, print and embroidery, back um, in the late 80s uh, when I was just graduating high school. Actually, while I was still in high school, I was uh, working at a multi-head embroidery shop um, here in Denver. Um, and uh, yeah, started to learn the ropes of embroidery before that. Um, learned how to sew on an industrial sewing machine uh, from my father. And um, just really grew up uh, around the industry. Uh, um, after graduation, um, for a secondary job, I picked up uh, pulling a squeegee for a while at a screen printing shop. And yeah, learned, uh, learned some stuff around that. So um, one of the things that um, was interesting is as I was learning all these um, different applications in the uh, decoration industry, um, my wife and I started to formulate some ideas of starting our own business. Um, and really, um, it, was, uh, it was generated off of seeing needs um, for places that when we were growing up were near and dear to our heart. Um, so... Back in 1995, I think it was 95, yeah, 95, we started our own business. Um, for the first couple of years, we farmed out all of our decoration. Um, but where we really got majority of our business to, um, to really, you know, be profitable and, and actually really call it something that was uh, making a living, we went to our local schools. Um, so... Growing up, both my wife and I and um, some of our brothers and sisters also uh, were in different um, things in school. So, for example, my wife and I were heavily into uh, marching band and my wife was into show choir um, and to theater. And so uh, growing up, we always, you know, it was one of those things where we didn't really realize how difficult it was to get things at the time. Um, but, you know, we always wanted like a cool drumline shirt for that year, you know, uh, um, and, and have names or nicknames put on it. And um, it was just really difficult to find people who could do that. Now, obviously, this day and age, um, you've got the internet, um, but a lot of folks still um, like to do business with folks that are, you know, local, um, and, and so, you know, there's just not a lot of that going around. So um, as this, as the name of this, uh, um, uh, this session is called, I want to talk to you about getting into local schools um, and supporting them, um, but also growing your business at the same time. And so um, as we move on here, and let me just see why it's not moving to the next screen. I apologize. Let's see here, Navigator, okay, there we go. Yeah, here's a, I just found this on the internet, thought it was hilarious because I remember these uh, folders. Not sure if you guys remember them, but getting these brand new at the beginning of the season, uh, you know, school year, and um, everybody starts drawing on them and, you know, all the crushes you have and all that kind of stuff. Um, but schools are looking for a lot of different product. Um, you know, when we first think about it, um, we're thinking, okay, spirit wear t-shirts, that's a given. Um, but you always have trophies, you have, um, you know, all kinds of sports jerseys and, and all the spirit wear that goes along with all the different sports. And, you know, you've got cheerleading, you've got, um, you know, all kinds of stickers, decals showing off your pride for that school. Um, you've got banners um, that are needed. Uh, people like to wear, um, either if they're alumni or if they're actually still at the school or a staff at the school, they like to wear apparel that represents their school. Um, so, you know, all, all types of things from hats to socks to um, you name it. Uh, there's just a ton of stuff that people are looking for. Um, and majority of it, unless they've been hooked up by someone local, more times than not, they, they end up getting someone nationally that can serve them. And, and that works. Um, it's not a horrible thing by no means. Uh, there's a lot of great companies out there that do national business. 
Um, but it does take the kind of the person to person or that personality or that customer service part of, of having someone that shows up to your school, um, checks on you, um, and, and things like that. So there's a lot of things that we kind of lose when we go to just an internet based only type of solution. So I believe, um, there's a way for you to, if you're not already doing some school products, um, you can do it, but it's, it's like looking at Mount Everest and saying, okay, I'm going to go for a hike and I'm going to just make it to the top, right? You can't do that. Um, you need to kind of do some legwork beforehand um, to make sure that you're ready uh, for that. So my suggestion would be is do research around you. Um, find out what schools are, are near and dear to you. So I'm going to skip forward just for a second. So all I did was I just did a Google search on schools near me and you can see you know all these little uh, um, points that are locations of schools that are uh, very close to me um, and there's probably a whole lot more that um, if I zoomed in or if I put in a little bit more information um, that I could get you know you're gonna find everything from public schools um, to uh, private schools um, to everything in between, to, um, you know, charters, uh, to uh, all kinds of, you know, different specialty schools seem to be a very um, big item nowadays. Um, so by no means am I here to tell you um, all the different types of schools, but what I would do is I would find the nearest schools to you. And then going back one, um, I would start looking at them and go, okay, you know, the ones that you're interested in, what are their school colors? What is their mascot? Um, check out their website. Do they do they already have, um, you know, uh, a, a spirit wear shop? And I, I dropped down a couple, so I apologize. I'm not going in exact order, but you know, do they already have a spirit shop? Um, what about theater and fine art groups? Um, you know, like bands and choirs and yeah, drama. Um, huge, huge need for customized product, be it apparel, be it, you know, um, wearable stuff, be it uh, plaques or trophies to give away. Um, academically, there's a lot there too. Um, you know, what kind of sports do the schools offer? Here in Colorado now, majority of the elementary and middle schools um, don't offer too many sport options. A majority of those are done through clubs. Um, uh, and, and same thing, you could use this, this session that we're going through. Um, you could do it with clubs as well as, um, you know, just uh, schools in general. So you could use this formula um, for, you know, soccer clubs or football clubs or uh, local, you know, city-run uh, sports, things like that. But really what you want to do is... Um, you really want to identify your ends with the school. And, and what I mean by the ends is it's always, always good to have an in, meaning did your kids go to the school? Um, maybe you went to the school at one point. Um, friends or family went to the school. You know a teacher or an administrator. Uh, maybe you know somebody on the uh, parent-teacher uh, uh, board. Um, you know, maybe you know one of the... Um, coaches, uh, maybe you know the band director, or, you know, the, the big one is the boosters for the different organizations within the school. So there's not a given, um, I, hopefully you know this, but maybe you don't, there is not one decision maker when it comes to customized product for schools. Usually that falls into the different clubs or different academic parts or into the fine arts department or the sports, you know, the coaches, or maybe it's um, the, um, if you know, the district um, admin for, for the sports, it may be there. But who do you know? Um, who do you know? That's, it's a really big thing to identify with who do you know. Um, and once you've got that information, uh, then you can start to really make some sense out of how can I link up with um, with that, uh, with that school. And so I want to just jump around here for a minute. I'm going to jump over to my Chrome. I'm going to pull up, um, 
just an example that was on that um, Google list. This is a, a elementary school that's uh, very close to us, um, uh, where I live here in Thornton, Colorado. Um, and so I got on and I started looking at this, and I, I know one of the the administrators that are still there. Our, our kids went to this school. All three of our um, children, my wife and I's children, went to this this school. And so I, I, I know them. I know the colors. I've got some passion for the school. So I could take and I could approach that admin um, and see if there's any needs that aren't being filled. Um, but one thing that I could do beforehand is I could kind of get an idea of like on their website, what kind of clubs and activities are they doing? Um, and, and so this is a really good idea to do is to check out what's going on at the school and, and see, once again, if, if you've got an in there. So, for example, um, you know, you may know um, a lot about gymnastics. Maybe you grew up doing gymnastics and, and that's something near and dear to your heart. Or, it's again, like me, maybe you're really heavily into music and uh, maybe, you know, the instrumental music club might be a great place. So, I can click on this. Um, and the nice thing about it is it tells me a little bit about what they're doing um, and kind of when it starts. Um, it doesn't look like they've updated this for a little bit. So our, our dear friend um, Corona has probably put a little bit of a halt on, on, on this club. But, you know, if you wanted to, you could get a hold of um, the organizer of this club, um, introduce yourself um, it would be really nice if I, you know, once again, if I was still in the business, I could get a hold of this uh, Miss Harden and let her know that, um, you know, I personally went through this district. Um, I was heavily involved in music. After I graduated, I actually stayed involved as an instructor for percussion at one of the local high schools um, that all three of my kids went to the school. And, and so just kind of let her get to know uh, my background, and then as well tell her that, you know, I started um, a, um, a personalization business and offer anything from stickers to plaques to wearable customized uh, product um, and see if there's anything that um, she could see either in the current need or in the near future need um, that possibly my business could assist her on. So it's always good to jump on there. Um, I've got other examples of this. I, you know, my kids went to Century Middle School. Um, I know the band director there very, very well. Um, so once again, I've, I've got those ends um, that I could call on. And the nice thing is, is you don't need to tackle the whole school um, at one time, uh, meaning that, you know, if you can get one in at a school and you do really good work for them, at a reasonable price, you don't want to undercut yourself to where it's not profitable. You, you're in business to make money. Uh, but on the other hand, if you can take care of um, the people at the, the school, they are going to be your biggest advertisers. They are going to tell everybody in the teacher's lounge how great um, your product is. They're going to, these other folks are going to see it um, and, and ask, you know, uh, you know, like a Miss Harden, where did you get that product? Where, um, where might I be able to do that? And and so, you know, if if you can get in with one in, it's really going to help. So we'll come back to that here in a bit. Um, let's go back to our um, our keynote. And um, you know, once again, it's it's really about identifying your in. All you're trying to do is get your foot in the door. You're not you're not trying to bust the door wide open. Um, you're not trying to um, tackle Mount Everest, so to say, in in uh, accomplishing this. So that's kind of the the gist of that. Uh, as we move on, you really want to make the connections. Once you've identified your ends, make the connections. Re reach out to them via phone and or email um, at the contacts at your school. Um, so, for example, if, if you don't have that information, once again, if you go to the school uh, website, more than likely, they're going to have the information about who you need to get a hold of. And if, if it's not the right person, if you do a good job of introducing yourself and um, giving 
you know, a brief explanation of who you are. You don't want to go crazy, but um, a brief explanation of who you are and who your business is, you'd be amazed of, of how far that will take you. Um, so once you do that, um, set up a meeting in person. Um, if right now with all the craziness going on, maybe you can't do it in person, uh, person uh, use a virtual system like a Zoom um, or go to meeting. Um, you know, or Google Hangout. Um, Google is a really big um, tool that is used by our school systems these days. So if you know that language a little bit about what is, so to say, unquote, hip <laughs> um, in the schools, um, that'll get you a little bit further as well. So, you know, connect with them. Um, find out what their current and future needs are in Spiritware or customized products. Um, you know, you've, you've always got something going, um, and that's what takes us to the next thing is schedule. Once you know all that, we're going to talk about prep work, but at the same time, before you get off this phone call, schedule a follow-up meeting where you can present your offering. So um, do something where it's, uh, you know, there's there's no obligation, um, whoever this is. Let's, let's stick with Miss Harden at, at, at uh, Tarver with the music stuff. Um, there's... There's no obligation, but let me set up what I can do or my business can do for you when it comes to, um, you know, spirit wear or customized products. And from there, take and prep yourself for connecting to the schools. And what I mean by that is, you know, what is it from the uh, kind of the introduction phone call or email, that first meeting one-on-one, -on -one, be it virtual or in person, what kind of products can you provide? Um, uh, can you do anything virtual and or physical samples? And what I mean by that is there's tools out there, right? There's a, there's a company called Inksoft. I, I am not affiliated with Inksoft, but I really like the products that they offer because they make it really easy for you to set up um, an online store for a school, um, you know, or spirit store, if you want to call it that. Um, they also offer a really cool thing that is uh, more like fundraiser type website where, you know, instead of selling the uh, infamous chocolate bars or I remember as a kid, the gold C book. So the coupon book or the coupon card, um, everybody in the area loves to support their no local schools. I'm, I'm hardly nobody is not a part of that. So you know, if, if the students could offer spirit wear or a product that they could sell and then a portion of those proceeds of the sale go back to that that club or the organization within the school, it is a phenomenal way to do fundraising. And we know in the state of our schools these days that fundraisers are a big way that a lot of things happen um, that wouldn't happen without it. You know, it's not it's not covered. So, for example, marching bands you know, figure the average size band between 100 to 200 kids. You have to have transportation these days to get them to competitions. Um, that is not cheap. You would think that's something that the school or school district would cover, but that's not always the case. Um, new marching band uniforms, same thing. Uh, you know, new um, props uh, for theater or for um, drama. Once again, it's, it's a lot of things like that are not covered under the general budget at a school. So fundraisers are a great way um, for those clubs to, to raise money. So um, having something like that uh, will work really well. Now, you don't have to do the Inksoft system. You could put together a, um, either a, uh, um, a Spiritware brochure, you know, like a, a one- or two-page color um, color paper that you could take and put multiple different products on it um, and your information or you may not want to put your information on it just the school information or the organizer of the of the spirit where um, you could do the same thing when it comes to the fundraiser um, so we're raising money to take the uh, the football team to a, in a way you know like a an other state uh, football game um, or we're, you know, trying to save money for the chess club um, to make a trip to to the UK to see 
where the first chess game played. I'm just making that up. I don't know if it was in the UK. I assume it would be, but hey, who knows? You probably know better than I do. But those are the types of things. So when you're talking to your ends, find out what is near and dear to them. What What's coming up? What kind of product or um, projects are they working on? Because more than likely, they've got something. It, it could be a library that is looking to to add a couple new computers or some new technology that um, that they didn't have before. Um, you know, it could be a marching band that's looking to get new drums or new flags, or maybe there's a couple sousaphones they need to purchase. That stuff's not cheap. Um, so, you know, find out what is near and dear to them and then start planning for it. Um, the physical samples, if you have the ability, like if you can do digital products like um, decals or stickers, um, you know, take in and, and produce some of those. Yes, you're, you're taking a little bit of uh, money and time to do that, but that, those samples are going to go a long ways. Um, and bring those physical products with you. Um, identify as you meet with the person. Identify who, um, you know, what size the person is that, that you're meeting with or, or kind of listen a little bit about what, you know, their, their um, hobbies are, or what they like to do. Are they a guy that or a gal that loves to wear baseball caps? Um, if so, maybe, maybe sew a ball cap up with the, uh, the name of the school and the correct colors um, and bring that back as kind of a thank you for taking time to meet with me. Um, so there's there's a lot of different things that um, that you can do there. Um, we saw this image earlier, but this just brings back you know what those things are. You may have an in with the uh, the principal or the assistant principal, and they're trying to do something to show uh, team um, unity with the the staff. So down at the bottom right corner. You know, maybe it's a, a button-up shirt that's got the uh, the church or the uh, school logo on it, um, and then maybe the different names of the uh, teachers underneath it, or maybe some kind of uh, slogan that is uh, used for that year. Um, uh, you know, those are great items uh, for um, you know for staff members. There's a lot of different things you can see stuff on here that. Um, you know, there's cheer stuff, there's a chess, there's just spirit wear in general, all kinds of an award type thing. If you if you do anything with uh, either die sub or laser engraving, um, different types of decorations like that, if you can get in with the school and, and take care of that school alone and trophy and awards, it, it makes it a very lucrative business. Um, but on top of it, you can feel good because um, unlike a, a corporate facility or a, a company that you deal with, maybe schools, you can invest a little bit of that money that you're making back into the school. So, you know, be it, uh, let's say like a marching band, maybe what you can do is tell the band director or the, um, um, or the uh, booster president, look, uh, if, if you're 120 students buy uh, the marching band t-shirt, um, the show shirt, as we call it in marching band, they buy the show shirt, will produce up to 12 shirts for your staff. So that means your band director and then all your techs for all the different parts of the band, um, you won't have to pay for those shirts. Um, so we will give those to you at no cost for the purchase of these other shirts. Um, so always be listening to kind of what is near and dear to the person that you're talking to's hearts um, and then try to deliver something that appeases that that portion of what's near and dear to them. Um, that will do two things. That will get you the business, which is important. Um, but the most important thing is the longevity. It will start to build a relationship between you and that uh, individual um, and everything as they come up every year just mark it on your calendar to uh, you know get in contact with them a couple weeks prior to when the event started. Um, and when we used to have the business, I would like to check in with those individuals on you know during the busy season of their time, like marching bands in the fall, usually, maybe not this year. <laughs> um, but 
you know, I would check in with them starting in July. I would, I would send an, e- uh, an email or send back in the day, there wasn't so much email, but I would uh, send a, um, a letter or phone call and say, Hey, just checking in. Um, are you excited for this season? And, you know, they would start telling me about the different things they're doing with the show and what cool props they're doing and, and how excited the staff and the kids are. Um, and I would listen to that and really listen in detail um, and, and then, you know, come back and, and, and with a follow-up and say, hey, uh, I know you're doing a show uh, with, um, you know, maybe it's Phantom of the Opera. We'll just use that as an example. Um, I've got some really cool show shirt ideas for you. Um, you don't have to use these. If you've got something already in mind, would love to help you put that on um, a show shirt for each one of the kids and then mention the staff um, freebie thing. You'd be amazed how that goes. Um, you know, if you stick with that theme of marching band towards, um, at least here in Colorado, as we get closer to the end of October, beginning of November, that typically is the end of the season. And so, you know, before that, a couple weeks before that, start talking to your contact about, hey, do you need any kind of awards or trophies for the end of the year um, ceremony for the marching band? Um, You could take the same type of platform that we just talked about and maybe you grew up where you have a passion in in cheerleading or um, maybe you were a teacher or still are a teacher and you've got the ends there. Um, There's a lot of different things you can do to get that in, you know, sticking back with marching band. How cool would it be for the boosters to show up with a banner that says, uh, you know, um, whoever pride or. Uh, we love you, band parents, or from band parents, you know, something like that, a big banner that as the marching band's on the football field doing their thing, they can look up in the stands and they know where the parents are because they're wearing all the cool fan apparel um, that you made, and they've got a big banner that says, you guys rock out there on the field, thank you. So there's a lot of lot of neat stuff that you can do. There's not just one given thing, that, but it's really about keeping your ears open and listening to what they ask for. Any of these things that we just talked about, um, uh, you know, from staff to, uh, to the clubs like chess or cheer or fine arts, um, almost every single one of them is going to want a decal. Um, I know when my kids were growing up, we had decals on our back window of all the different sports or different clubs. Um, that our kids were in. Uh, I miss those days. Our kids are all now graduated from high school and, and have moved on past that, but it still does my heart good when I I see a a car out on the, on the road and it's got a, you know, a drum with some drumsticks over the top of it. And it says maybe, um, legacy lightning graduate 2021. Um, you know, you know, that that person's probably got a kid in the, in the marching band over at legacy high school here in Colorado. And, um, and you're like, man, that's cool. They're, they're showing off their pride. So, um, it's not about one decoration type by no means. There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, on this screen, you can see, uh, some, some letterman jackets. Um, I'm going to cruise back over to the internet for a second. And there is a company out there called Citadel Brands. Um, do a Google search on them, and, and you don't have to write this down immediately. You can rewatch it, but they've got some really cool um, Letterman jackets that aren't, they're not super thick wool jackets that you pay two or 300 bucks for. I know this, I had to buy three of them. Um, um, we, we love our children, so we bought them, but these are a little bit less expensive, um, less than $20 wholesale. Um, You could take and do something for a a team like chess or the marching band again or cheer and uh, use this company and and offer, hey, we'll do left chest and a back with a customized name drop on it um, and charge somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, maybe 50 to 75 dollars, depending on how much you're putting on the, the jacket. And and you're, you know, once again, you're doing something that is very. Um, near and dear to that school's heart. It's also something that probably doesn't get advertised very well nationally through a, through a, you know, a website, um, 
without someone explaining it. Um, and once again, if, if you get a big order of them, you know, take care of um, the customer. And what I mean by that is if you charge 40 or $50 or more on these, you know, and let's say you sell 10 of them, um, give one for free. Hey, uh, director of the cheers uh, or the coach, I guess is what they call them. I'm not a cheer person, so I apologize. But hey, coach, what size do you wear and what would you like on yours? Because we're going to give you one for free. Um, or maybe as you're talking to the uh, um, the lead person, maybe they're saying, hey, we've got a couple um, uh, folks that are in the team that can't afford to buy one of these. Is there any way that we could, um, you know, do like a scholarship or, or a donation of a couple jackets for those uh, for those uh, kiddos? Um, listen to that and see what you can provide. Once again, you're in this for a, for a profit. Um, but that doesn't mean that every penny that you make, you can't give a couple of those pennies back um, to the school. So, you know, ideas like this uh, Letterman jacket is just one, uh, one idea. So check out, I, I found Citadel Brands a um, couple years back at one of the, I think it was at an MBM show and maybe down in Texas, um, they were there, but wonderful, wonderful company. Um, and uh, the product is really, really nice. I've actually done a couple of these jackets for um, friends and family. I'm not running my business anymore, so all that is just side work. But um, the Letterman jacket from uh, uh, from Citadel is really nice. So, okay, let's go back. Like stay, stay to the uh, topic here. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, post them um, in the comments. Um, I will be, uh, as well as the team, um, at Melco, will be um, um, watching this with you at the same time and uh, answering those comments. So, um, you know, if you've got a question like, hey, Mike, what about, you know, copyright of the school logo? Um, we can we can try to answer those for you. Um, I'll tell you that most, um, almost every public school that I know of, there's no copyright on the school name. Um, or the mascot itself. Now, they may be using a mascot that was copyrighted outside of the school, um, but the school itself probably has not copyrighted it. When it comes to private schools, um, that gets a little bit different. Um, sometimes they'll they'll take and, and copyright their logos, and you need to have permission. And the best thing to do on that is, uh, back when you make contact, ask if there's any you know guidelines or regulations on using the school, um, the school's information. So, all right, let's uh, let's move on to the next one here. All right, this is really important. So, deliver what you can offer to the school. So, what makes you different um, than your competitors? That's really really important. It's not just important for the school aspect of it, but also as you reach out to other businesses. What sets you apart? Um, one of the things that my wife and I, you know, really, really were proud of is as we were in business, um, uh, this was prior to me coming to work with Melco, and that's when kind of we started closing down our business. But as we were in business with this, we would support the schools that um, we were doing business with. So we would go see competitions. We would go to football games. Um I know you can't go to every event, but, you know, you would show up and do those things. Or, you know, if you knew something big was coming up, maybe uh, one of the, the bands was taking a trip to uh, Orlando or something like that. Take in, if, if you've made enough money off of them, make a banner up that says, you know, good luck in Orlando. Um, go, you know, go Gordon Orsman or whatever the, uh, the mascot is of the, um, of the school. But figure out what makes you different. Um, you know, uh, the better your customer service is, of course, the more likely the contact at the school will share your information with others. And that's the best type of advertising still to this day um, is word of mouth. You know, how great you are. Um, you will get more referrals um, from a happy customer uh, than than anything, you know, you you can you can spend a lot of money these days advertising on social media and things like that. But 
to really build your business, it's word of mouth. Um, you know, it never hurts to to give your contact a free, you know, a couple free freebies like we talked about. Um, understand what their needs are. Um, learn the events of each school and, and put it, you know, what they have on their calendar and put those on your calendar. And as you start to build that relationship, support them. You know, if, if it's music, go see the concert or go to the marching band competition and, and root on those bands. Um, you know, make sure that you're involved because the more you're involved, the less opportunity it is for that school or that organization to want to do business with someone online. Um, you become part of their, um, their, their world. And, and that to them is very important. Um, be it football, be it basketball, wrestling, um, be it music. Of course, you've heard me talk a lot about music uh, in this session, but it, it is all very important that you become part of their, you know, their social world. And because then they know you care um, and they're going to be the first thing that comes to their mind when they think, hey, we need this customized product uh, for this event. Um you're going to be the first one to call them. Um, you also want to make sure that you're doing regular follow-ups. You know, if you haven't heard from one of these customers for a month or two, it's your job. They can get really busy, um, and I'm the guiltiest one of this. They can get really busy and forget to reach out to you when they need things. And then the next thing you know, they'll hand it off to somebody else, and they're back to ordering it from an online place um, and, and you just lost that, that connection. So make sure that you're making those contacts. If, if you hear in their, their voice that, hey, it's, I'm getting ready to retire or, you know, I'm a booster and my kid graduates school this year, you know, um, start trying to build that, um, that relationship with the next person um, or the next persons. It's really important um, you know, school is always changing. People are always changing in schools. Um, all kinds of activities are changing. And so once again, if you can get your foot in that door, you're going to have a long ways you can go with the foot in the door. You take care of that customer um, and, and not try to, to squeeze every penny you can out of them. Rather, make a good profit and then donate back to that organization um, it's going to take you a long, long ways um, in building that. And so I'm sure you have some questions. You, you may have some opinions, too. And I would love to hear those because by no means do I have all the answers to how things uh, work. So a comment um, if you've done something for schools or, um, you know, maybe it's a, a, an organization like cheer or clubs like uh, soccer or football and you've, you know, you've done this and it worked really well for you, put them in the comments so others can learn about what you've done. Um, I, I know sometimes we get afraid that um, if we share too much of the secret sauce um, that, you know, people become, uh, you know, peers become our competition. But I really don't believe in that. I believe that, um, you know, the only reason that we lose accounts is because we don't take care of accounts. So it's very important for us to, to nurture those relationships, to make sure that we're delivering the best, absolute best product we can for the least amount of money that still makes us a good profit that we're in business for. Those are the big things. So a little bit about um, the company that I represent, Melco. Um, here is my email address, by the way. Uh, just in case, if you have any questions, you feel free to to email me. Um, and so you can always pause this and fast forward it or rewind to that information. But um, Melco is a manufacturer of commercial embroidery equipment. Um, we make a single head machine. And that machine um, can be connected together and they're connected via Ethernet, just regular Cat5 Ethernet cable like what you use. In a, in a local area network in, let's say, in an office. Um, so there's nothing you know crazy about it. They connect to a computer, which makes them more like an embroidery printer. And what I mean by that is instead of having a, um, a, an LCD screen built into each machine, 
by using a computer that allows Melco to offer updates um, quite often where we've got new technology that we can enhance um, the, uh, the functionality, the efficiency um, of our equipment. Um, we are, uh, we are a U.S. based company, um, so all of our engineering, um, all of our technicians, um, uh, on phone support, um, all of our uh, corporate stuff happens in Denver, Colorado. We were actually founded in, in Denver, Colorado back in 1972. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of large companies like Nike, New Balance, Build-A-Bear, um, Disney Shopping, just to name a few that, that use our equipment. But really the equipment um, allows you to get into embroidery. If you're farming that out right now, it allows you to get into it um, at a, a minimal cost. Um, and allows you to grow on that platform. So instead of paying that minimal cost to to get in the door, and then uh, you know losing majority of that money when you upgrade, you can just add on additional heads, and you're building up a a, a, a multi-head um, functionality. So really cool stuff. Um, if you've got questions about uh, the Melco embroidery equipment, feel free to get them um, put on the comment section. And, and one of us will jump out and, and answer those questions for you. Uh, we also um, do a lot with uh, different companies. Um, so, you know, we are uh, associated or are, I shouldn't say associated so much as uh, we are um, official distributors of the Epson digital products when it comes to personalization. So be it uh, the DTG, the F2100 or the... Um, or it might be the die sub units that Epson sells, as well as the Roland products um, that are typically going to be your UV print or your print eco print uh, dice um, die cut. Or I'm sorry, not die cut, but print cut. Sorry, I've got die sub on my head. Um, print cut uh, stuff. So once again, if you have any questions on the equipment, um, cruise over after this session cruise over to the Melco booth um, on the virtual MBM and, and check out Melco. Um, it's a wonderful company with a lot of wonderful people that work for it. Um, and I think that brings me to the end. Uh, once again, we're authorized dealer of the Epson product as well as the Roland. We carry the Hottronics uh, heat presses, the Stahl's Hottronic heat presses. Uh, we carry a lot of different things. So I hope... More than anything, I hope that you got something out of this session. Um, I would love to get feedback from you on any questions that you have. Post in the comments. Any comments like, hey, Mike, this is a good idea, but if you did this, it would even take it further. Um, I'm always up for learning something new. So please share those thoughts with us. Um, and, I, and I hope you got something out of this today. Most importantly, take care of those people that are in your life and take care of each other. Have a great day.